Thank you for downloading or streaming this message from Emmanuel Church. We are one church with multiple locations, and we believe God wants to bless you right where you are. In a few moments, you're going to hear some practical teaching from God's Word that I believe will be inspiring and relevant to your life. First, though, if you haven't yet experienced Emmanuel Live, we encourage you to go to our website, eclife.org, to check out our service times and locations so that you can experience Emmanuel in person or through our online campus. If this message blesses you and you'd like to support the ministry financially, again, you can go to eclife.org and click on the Giving tab and choose Online Campus at your campus. Thanks again for joining us today, and we hope this message will be an encouragement to you on your spiritual journey. <laughs> Well, Merry Christmas, Emmanuel Church. How are you feeling today? Pretty good? It is great to be here with you. Hey, if this is your first time and someone has invited you and you're our guest today, uh, we want to give you a very special welcome. Can we give it up for all of our first-time guests? If you're joining us here at Greenwood or Banta or Franklin or Garfield Park or Seymour or Martinsville campus or if you're joining us online, we want to welcome you or one of our microsites, welcome to you as well. Uh, we're in a series right now as a church called Christmas at the Movies and what we've been doing is kind of looking at some different Christmas movies, some of the most famous Christmas movies, some of your favorite Christmas movies, pulling out some spiritual truth from those movies and, and trying to apply that uh, that truth to our lives. And today we are diving into what I think is one of the greatest Christmas movies of all time, and that is Elf. Um, Will Ferrell is just hysterical, is he not? I mean, he's one of the most funniest people alive. Um, so here, really quick, are some of the main characters or the main characters in the movie. Of course, you've got Buddy, then you got Walter, Buddy's dad, we'll hear about him in just a little bit, Michael, Buddy's brother, uh, uh, Walter's son, Papa Elf, Santa, and of course, there's Jovi. Um, some fun facts about this movie I did not know. Will Ferrell, many, many years before uh, he became a well-known actor, actually played a mall Santa. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Um, there's a scene in this movie, you're going to see it in just a moment, where, where there's an elf. Um, and I did not know this about this movie, but there's an elf that appears in this movie that's actually Ralphie from A Christmas Story could not, life-changing information. I could not believe that because I love A Christmas Story. Anybody else love A Christmas Story? And you're going to see, maybe for the first time in this clip here in just a few moments, you're going to see if you can pick up who Ralphie is. Uh, some other fun facts about this movie. Um, when Buddy drinks that two liter of Coke, I know I might be spoilless for some of you, but hey, shame on you for not seeing this movie uh, earlier. But when he drinks the two liter of Coke, that's, he actually drinks two liters of Coke in that scene. Like, I did not know that. And uh, no, that's actually not true. That's, that's a lie. That's a lie. No, you can really see it's not real. But you know what is real? Didn't know this. The burp. The burp is a real burp. Now, Buddy did not burp that, of course, because he didn't drink the soda. But someone else on, on set, uh, that was an actual recorded burp, um, this, this, which is incredible. One more f crazy uh, fact about, the, about this movie, uh, that the original, before they brought Will uh, Ferrell in, they were actually looking at Jim Carrey to be the, uh, uh, the elf, which that would, be, that would have been incredible. Imagine Jim Carrey as the elf. Great, great movie. If you have seen it, you know the movie starts out with, you know, where Santa's in an orphanage and he's there delivering presents and, you know, this baby crawls into Santa's sack. Unknowingly, Santa brings the baby back to the North Pole. It turns out to be Buddy. They name him Buddy. They don't know what to do with him. So Papa, uh, Papa, Santa says to Papa Elf, hey, why don't you raise him? Papa Elf always wanted to raise uh, an elf. And, and so he finally had, had his opportunity. Uh, things are going well and, 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 and every, until it doesn't go well. And Buddy soon discovers that he's, He's not an elf. Check out this clip. Hey, Ming Ming. Um... I'm going to be a little bit short on today's quota. It's all right, buddy. Just how many extra sketches did you get finished? Come on, buddy, how many? 
I made uh, 85. That puts you 915 off the pace. Why don't you just say it? I'm the worst toy maker in the world. I'm a cotton-headed ninny muggins. <gasps> no, buddy, you're not a cotton-headed ninny muggins. We all just have different talents. That's all. Seems like everyone else has the same talents except for me. You, you have, you have lots of talents. Uh, special talents, in fact, like. Um, uh, special talents? Uh, you changed the batteries in the smoke detector? Uh -huh. Sure did. Triple A's. In six months, you'll have to check them again. Won't mm -hmm. yeah, And you're the only baritone in the elf choir. <laughs> you bring us down a whole octave. In a good way. <laughs> See, buddy? You're not a cotton-headed ninny muggins. You're just... special. Hey, Foom Foom. I hate to do this to you, but you think you can help me pick up the slack on those etch sketches? No problem. Appreciate it. Buddy is killing me. Ernie got Lum Lum and Choo Choo pulling doubles. Was quick thinking yesterday with that special talents thing. I feel bad for the guy. Just hope he doesn't get wise. Well, if he hasn't figured out he's a human by now, I don't think he ever will. Did you pick up who Ralphie was? Yeah. Did you see him there? Um, he had the beard. He was the elf in the red suit. So, Buddy discovers that he is not an elf, and he has this crisis of identity. Who am I? Where do I come from? Where is my place? Who's my, who's my father? He runs away to, the, to his house, and Papa Elf has to explain to him that his dad is Walter Hobbs, his mom is Susan Wells. She's no longer alive. Before she died, she gave birth to Buddy, but Walter doesn't know it. He lives in New York City, and Buddy has this existential crisis of identity. Who am I? Where do I belong? Whose am I? And so he decides that he is going to go find out who he is and where he belongs. I believe all of us have this dynamic going on in our lives. And I think we, this is true for all of us. We all want to know who we are and whose we are. Every single one of us. I saw a stat the other day that said that 70% of adult adoptees uh, express feelings of uncertainty in their life and ambiguous loss about their biological parents. And if you're adopted today, maybe you fall into that 70%. Like your life is kind of like, there's, there's a lot of uncertainty and, and a feeling of, of loss in your life. Who am I? Where do I belong? Who are my parents? Where do I fit in? This explains the human existence, and not just for folks who have actually been adopted, but, but for all of us, because in a very real sense, when you read this book, and I hope that you do, especially the New Testament, what you discover is that all of us are spiritual orphans. We all come into this world disconnected from God, thanks to our great, 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 great grandparents, Adam and Eve. <laughs> like, they blew it in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 1 to and three, and they lost connection with God, and we've paid the price. Because of their sin and then our sin, we've been disconnected from God. So in a very real sense, we're all in the same boat in the, in the, in the sense that we are spiritual orphans. That's what the Bible teaches. And we all have this desire inside to kind of figure out like, okay, where's my place? Where's my spot in this world? Which is why you see humans do what humans do. Everyone wants to belong to a group or, or, or a team or some sort of political affiliation or some sort of crowd. Like all human beings want to find their spot and find their place and to fit in. We say, oh, this is just maybe a middle school thing or a high school thing or a college thing. No, it's a 20-something thing, 30-something thing. It's a 40-something thing. It's a 50 -something. Anybody honest enough to admit that? Like you're still 50 trying to fit in? Anybody? Anybody? Right? Maybe you're 60 still trying to fit in. You know, we join motorcycle gangs, Harley Davidson gangs. We'll join any, we'll, we'll join the Moose Lodge. You know, we'll, you know, it's, it's just a thing. Like it never stops. Like where am, who am I? Where do I fit in? Where's my split? Where's my people? Like this is why humans do what they, this is why they dress the way they dress, right? I, I tried to go get a pair of shoes the other day for my wife for Christmas. I walked into the mall yesterday. 
I tend to wait to the last minute. And I, and I, like, I'm such a simple person, like, tell me what you, like, tell me what you want, show me a picture. So I got this picture on my phone, and I walk up to these people in the mall and all the different stores, do you have these? Like, I don't even look. I don't want to shop, I don't want to look on the shelves, I don't want to look at, I show the picture. Do you have it? So I walk into, I think it was like, uh, I can't even remember what store it was, but I show the guy this picture, he goes, dude, you can't get those anywhere in Indiana. I said, what did you just say to me? They're women's shoes. No one has them. So I go to the next store. I'm like, surely that's, that can't be true. That guy's smoking something. I don't know what his deal is. I mean, how, 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 how hard could it be to get these shoes? So I go into the next store and, and, and I show the guy the picture. I say, can, yeah, can you, can, do you have these? Oh, no, no, you can't, can't have those. No, those, you can't even get on the website and order those. What? People love, people, like, people want to fit in and they want to wear the same stuff. Like my wife wants a pair of shoes that apparently every other woman in America has. It's like, how about you get something different? I don't know. I want to fit in, you want to fit in. We all want to know who we are and whose we are. And, and this explains our shopping, our clothing, the way we do our hair, like you know, the way ladies do their makeup. Like today, I feel like everybody's makeup looks the same. You know, it's like these huge, you, you know, things around people's eyes with these long eyelashes that'll poke you in the eye. It's like, everybody's got the same eyelashes on. I'm not knocking it, I'm just saying everybody looks alike. Everybody looks alike. Anyway. Dudes do the same thing, we do the same thing. We do the same thing. I feel like this has turned into a comedy routine. Now, on a serious note, we, we all, we're all kind of lost spiritually, disconnected from God. That's what this book teaches. But that first Christmas morning, God began the process of fixing all that, of bringing us home to himself, of reconnecting us back to him. There's a passage of scripture I want you to see today. It's just unbelievable. I've been thinking about this one passage for the last couple of days, and the truth in this passage is just, I could, we could do a whole series just on, on this one verse. Listen to what the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 1. Please let this sink in. This might change your life. God decided in advance, or another version says he kind of predestined this. He decided in advance to do what? To say what's me? To adopt. Well, who gets adopted? Orphans get adopted. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family. That's what God did. He decided a long time ago to adopt you and me. How? By bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. That first Christmas morning when that baby was born, that was the beginning of the process of executing this adoption process. I don't know if you ever thought about Christmas in that light, but that's what it is. It's an adoption process. Baby comes in, Mary's pregnant. Now God's going to reconcile. He's going to adopt a new family. He's going to build this family through Jesus. And then, and then Paul says this, says this. This is what he, say with me, he he wanted to do. It's like, you ever wonder, like, what's God want? Well, this is what he wants to do. He wants to build his family. He wants to adopt a whole bunch of people into his family. This is what he wanted to do. And then Paul takes it a step further and says, and this brought him great pleasure. So in this one verse, here's what we see. We see what God did. What did he do? He adopted you. We see how he did it. He did it through Christmas, through Jesus Christ. Then it says why he did it. Because he wanted to, and then it tells us how he felt about it. It brought him great pleasure. I don't know if you've ever heard, or when the last time it was that somebody told you that, that God has, that you, bring God, that you bring great pleasure to God. That he wants you. Have you heard that recently? It's powerful. 
Wait, wait, Pastor Danny, are you saying that, that long time ago, God had his eye on me and he sent Jesus to adopt me into his family because he wanted me in his family. Like, there's lots of people out there that don't want me. I've been rejected, I've been fired, I've had people betray me, divorce me, I've this, I've that, I've been abused, blah, blah. There's lots of people in this world that don't want me. You're saying God wants me, he wants me in his family and because it brings him pleasure to have me in his presence? Yes, wow, that's powerful. Especially for people who, who have this deep longing inside to, to want to know who we are and whose we are and where do we fit in and we'll contort ourselves and we'll paint ourselves and we'll, you know, we'll dress ourselves and we'll tattoo ourselves and we'll shave ourselves and just to fit in, right? What would happen in your life if you settled in to the family of God by faith through Jesus? See, here's the truth. Faith in Jesus makes you a child of God. What would happen if that became your identity, the most important thing about you. And you answered all the questions of who I am and where do I fit and who do I belong to. What if all that was settled through your relationship with God through Jesus Christ? Think about all of the striving and the weird things you do to fit in and the things you post and the things, that you, the social media, your relationship. Think about all the wonderful things that would just stop in your life. Because all the questions of your soul are answered in your relationship with Jesus. Wow, what a relief. Some of you need to come home to Jesus today through faith in him. I hope that you do. So Buddy, he has this, this identity crisis and so he decides, man, I can't stay in the North Pole. I'm not an elf and you're not my dad and I gotta go find my dad. So he, you know, he goes to find his dad and before he, leads, before he leaves the North Pole, Santa says, hey, bud, uh, listen up. If you see gum on the floor, it's not candy. Don't eat it. Uh, it, it. There's 30 raised pizzas, the real ones on the 11th Street. And if you see a sign that says Peep Show, it's not an invitation to see the Christmas presents early, so don't look. <laughs> and then he tells him one more thing. Check this out. Can't wait to see my dad. We're, we're going to go ice skating and, and eat sugar plums. Yeah, that's the other thing I wanted to talk to you about. You know, buddy, your father, well, he's on the naughty list. No! You're taking the books back? <laughs> see, I, I see what you're trying to do here. You, you're trying to make me feel bad when, in actuality, you're the one that missed the payments. But the children love the books. I know that, uh, you know, I'm the one that ran the focus groups, but I like hearing that. Listen, some people, they just lose sight of what's important in life. That doesn't mean they can't find their way again, huh? Maybe all they need is just a little Christmas spirit. Yeah! But the children love the books. I love it. It's such a great scene. <laughs> I love what Santa said there. I don't know if you caught it. Some people, they just lose sight of what's most important in life. Have you ever lost sight of what's most important in life? That doesn't mean they can't find their way again. Maybe all they need is just a little Christmas spirit. Walter Hobbs is on the naughty list. I think we're all on the naughty list. Here's what's true about you and me. All people lose sight of what's most important in life. All of us. Every single one of us are on the naughty list. When you pick up this book, again, and I hope you do, I hope you read it, it's so good. Here's what it says in Ecclesiastes. Not a single person on earth is always good and never sins. Have you ever, have you ever read that verse? Just to let you know, get off your self-righteous high horse because you're on the naughty list too. <laughs> Like you struggle and you lie and you see if you manipulate and you're passive aggressive and you gaslight and you're unfaithful. You don't keep your word. You lust for people who are not your spouse. I'm describing myself. Do you know that about yourself? That deep down in your heart, there's sin. We've all blown it. It's just the truth. In fact, that's the whole purpose of Christmas, like to fix that problem. Like I'm a sinner, you're a sinner. Like Christmas isn't a holiday so we could share presents and have a Christmas tree. 
Christmas is a rescue mission to save sinners from the penalty of sin. And I'm the first one. Does that make sense? I'm on the naughty like I need, I need help. Do you, do you need help? I need help from a save. I need to be saved from my sins. And in, in Romans chapter three, it says it like this. Everyone has sinned. Nobody can point fingers and say, ah, look at you. No, look at me. Like, Jesus, help me. Like, forget about the rest of the world. I hope you save me. <laughs> like, I'm in need of a savior. I've blown it. I've lied. I've cheated. I've stolen. One time when I was in high school, I went into a, a, a store and, and, and I thought I was so slick. I thought it was so slick. Had a backpack on. I started taking hats. It was a, it was a sports, it was a sports uh, ha- uh, store. I started taking hats off. And when, they, when no one was looking, I'd put them in my bag. I stole six or seven hats. I was about to walk out. I thought I had it made. Owner of the store catches me. <sighs> and he had me sit down in a chair for over an hour while he pretended to call the police. I was sweating. I was crying. All I could see was my mother's face. She was going to tear it off. She was going to tear my face off. And I sat there and I sweated and I sweated and I prayed. I was a thief. How about you? We're all sinners. And that's what Christmas is all about. It's about this Savior coming into the world, into the world to save us from our sins. And so Buddy makes this decision. He's like, you know what? I'm good at spreading Christmas cheer. I'm good. I can get my father off the naughty list. I can help him. And so he goes, to, goes after his dad. And in the first meeting, it doesn't go that well. Do you remember? Oh, this is such a great scene. Check this out. Excuse me. I'm here to see a Walter Hobbs. I'm Buddy the Elf. <laughs> you look hilarious. Who sent you? Papa Elf. Papa Elf? Mm -hmm. From the North Pole. From the North Pole? Yes. So you really think we should ship him? No. I think we should take a $30,000 bath so some kid can understand what happened to a puppy and a friggin' pigeon. Ship him. Yeah. Mr. Hobbs? It's me on the intercom. Go ahead. Yeah, I think someone sent you a Christmas gram. Dad! All right, uh, let's get it over with. I walked all day and night to find you. Uh, you look like you came from the North Pole. <laughs> That's exactly where I came from. Santa must have called you. Oh, yeah, sure. He uh, just got off the cell phone with me. You did? So, go on. Uh, go on with what? Well, I, are you going to sing a song or something, or can I just go back to work? A song? Uh, Yeah. Anything for you, Dad. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm here with my dad, and we never met, and he wants me to sing him a song. <laughs> and um, I was adopted, but you didn't know I was born. So I'm here now. I found you, Daddy. And guess what? I love you. I love you. I love you. Wow. Well. That was weird. You know, usually you guys just, uh, you know, put my name in the jingle bells or something. It's me, your son. Susan Wells had me, and, and she didn't tell you, and, 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 but now I'm here. It's me, buddy. Susan Wells. You said Susan Wells? Yes. Who sent this Christmas gram? What's a Christmas gram? I want one. I think we should call security. Good idea. I like to whisper, too. As you've seen the movie, many of you have, he continues to try to love his dad. His dad continues to reject him. And what I love about this, this movie is that Buddy never stops loving his dad, no matter how much he's rejecting him. And I think that's true for us, too. I think that, that God has expressed his love for us. That's not new news. You've heard that before, that God loves you. But there's so many of us that reject that and reject that or resist that and we don't want to be part of that. But that doesn't mean God stops. In fact, God never stops loving us, ever. The worst of the worst of the worst of the worst, God never stops loving the people 
that he created. Maybe you needed to hear that today because you think, man, I've gone too far. You don't understand what I've done. I've hurt too many people. I've messed too many things up. God wants you to hear this today. I will never stop loving you. In Ephesians chapter two, the apostle Paul writes these words, but God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, we were spiritual orphans born into this world, disconnected from God. He gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. That's what God, that's, that's what God through Christ did that first Christmas morning. He began the process of giving you spiritual life, adopting you into his family, forgiving you of, his, of your sins by having Christ die in your place. God never stops loving you. There's this great verse in, in the book of Psalms that's repeated over and over and over. Psalm 106, verse one, it says this. Praise the Lord, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Watch this. His faithful love endures forever. His faithful love endures forever. Over and over and over in the Old Testament, the Jewish people would sing this. This is actually a song. They would sing this back to God. Your faithful love endures forever. There's nothing that can make God stop loving us, not even our sin. His position towards you is love. And that was Buddy's position towards his dad. He kept on loving him, even though his dad was on the naughty list. And so at the end of the movie, as it kind of comes down to a close, Walter's in trouble, man. He has shipped out some books that have two blank pages. He gets in trouble with his boss. He's got to put together a brand new children's book idea on Christmas Eve or else he's going to get fired. He's in the middle of a presentation. I actually wanted to show this clip to you, but there's a couple of cuss words in it. So can't really do that in church. Um, but, um, but there's this scene where he's getting ready to make this presentation. Buddy has kind of got his feelings hurt because Walter has really ripped into him and tore him, tore him up verbally. And so he's kind of, he went missing and Michael comes in his other scene, interrupts the meeting and, and Walter's got to make this decision. Does he go chase after his son or does he save his own rear end and make the presentation and save his job? And he, he makes the right decision because the love that he's been experiencing from Buddy has finally gotten to him. And so he leaves the interview, leaves the job interview, and he goes out to find his son, Buddy, and this is what happens. Buddy! I need to tell you something. I think there's something I have to tell you right now. Um, I didn't mean anything I said back there, not, not a word. I know you may be a little um, um, uh, chemically imbalanced, but you've been right about a lot of things. I, I don't want you to leave. You're my son and I, I love you. you wanted to tell me oh right come with me right come on and if you've seen the rest of the movie the Christmas cheer spreads and they start singing and Santa's sleigh is powered by by the love and it's Christmas cheer and you know so like Rudolph he he saves he saves Christmas. What happened there? I love this story because it's really the same story that we covered last week when we talked about the Grinch, when the Grinch's heart grew three sizes. What was it that changed Walter's heart? It was the unconditional love that he received from Buddy. In the, in the scene that I, what I didn't show you, Michael says to his dad, Dad, you, Buddy just thinks of everyone. You only think of yourself. Come on. And, and it's like something clicks. He's like, oh my gosh, that's true. But he's been loving me this whole time, even though I'm not worthy and I'm the guy that ships books to children that have blank pages on them. And I'm the guy that takes books back from the orphanage because they didn't pay. And, and it's just, it clicks. Last week I said that love is a powerful force and it is. It's the love of God that draws us into a relationship with him. Here's what's true about love. God's love for you. Love converts the heart. God's love converts our heart in the end when we truly understand our condition. What do I mean by that? Well, the Bible says in Romans chapter three, for the wages of sin is death. 
That's our condition. Like we're born into this world disconnected from God. Our first ancestors, Adam and Eve, they sinned, but we followed their example. Now we have our own sin to deal with. And the wage or the penalty of that sin is death, not just physical death, that's included, but spiritual death, separation from God. That's the penalty of our sin. That's bad news. So when the angels in the book of Luke, in the, in the Christmas story, when they say, I bring you good news that will, of great jo- uh, that, that will bring, bring great joy to all people, we have to understand the bad news first. Like Christmas is not good news unless we understand that the wages of sin is death. When I was in high school, I knew the bad news. I knew I was disobedient to my parents and I was a liar and I cheated on girlfriend after girlfriend after girlfriend and then I, I was a thief and I, I did other things. I, I, I abused alcohol. I, I, like, I, I was a bad kid. Like Nobody had to say, oh my gosh, Danny, you're a sinner. Like, no, I know it. And I had to realize that there's a penalty for being a sinner and that is Death. That's why Christmas is so important because God sent Jesus into this world to reverse the curse of sin. The wages of sin is death, but watch this. The free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. See, that's the good news. The good news is only good news unless we understand the bad news. And for me, when I was 17, I was like, man, I'm at, like that, that, connect the dots, boom, I'm, I'm good. I'm not signing up for religion or church. I don't like religion. I don't even like church. I like our church. What I understood was the penalty of sin was death and the free gift. We're about to open some gifts here in a few days or next day, tomorrow, or whatever, the day after. But this is the ultimate gift. The free gift is eternal life. In other words, Christ becomes a man. He's born that first Christmas day. He becomes a man, lives 33 years, spreads out his arms to die on a cross for you and me. Why? To wipe away your sin. To make you part of his family. And it's totally free. You say, what do you mean it's free? Don't I have to start coming to church? No. Don't I have to start giving my money? No. Don't I have to start being a good person? No, I think you should. I think you should do all those things, but it's not required. You say, well, what's required for me to receive this free gift of eternal life? Faith in Jesus. Putting your trust and faith and confidence in that baby that came into this world that first Christmas morning, that he died for you and that he rose again to adopt you into his family. Let me ask you a question today. Have you received the gift of adoption? Have you found your home in God's family? Do you understand that God decided in advance long time ago to bring you into his family, to adopt you into his family through Jesus Christ? This is what he wanted to do and it brought him great pleasure to do it. Do you, did, did that make sense to you today? I hope it did, because this is the most powerful message in the world. And it will answer all the questions of your soul and satisfy all the thirst in your soul and bring you all the fulfillment that you've wanted in your life thus far. Have you been adopted? I'm not asking you, will you join our church? I'm not asking you, will you become part of a religion? I'm not asking you, to, I'm asking you, have you been adopted by Jesus Christ? Are you one of his children? Here's what it says in Galatians chapter three. For we are all children of God. We've been adopted into God's family through faith in Jesus Christ. Wouldn't it be beautiful for this Christmas, 2023, Christmas of 2023, wouldn't it be beautiful that you can look back from every, on every Christmas from now until the day you die and say, Christmas 2023, I became a child of God by putting my faith in Jesus Christ. And he washed away all my sins because I trusted him, trusted that he died on the cross for me and became my savior. Wouldn't that be incredible? If that's where you're at today, I'm gonna say a simple prayer. It's a prayer a child can pray. It's a prayer of faith. It's a prayer of trust. It's a prayer where you're saying, God, I want to be adopted. I trust you today. If you feel that on your heart, that's God's work. That's God's spirit working in you. Take this moment, make it yours and become his child. Will you pray with me? Just say this to him. Dear Jesus, 
I wanna come home and become part of your family. I wanna know who I am and whose I am. And today I accept your invitation that you want me and it brings me, it brings you great pleasure to want me in your family. Even though I'm a sinner, even though I've blown it, you still love me. And so today I, I reach out with the faith of a child, simple, trusting faith that Jesus, you are the gift, the free gift of eternal life. I believe you were not only born that first Christmas morning, but you died on a cross and you rose again to adopt me, to cleanse my heart, to forgive me of my sins. And so I trust you today. Receive me into your family as your child. I give you thanks. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you just prayed that prayer at any one of our locations online here at Greenwood, we wanna celebrate, amen. The Bible says that when one person reaches out in faith, there is rejoicing in heaven. And so there's a party going on just for you. We also have a gift for you. If you put your faith in Christ today, uh, you text the word SAVE to 65248. We will put one of these in your hands at your location in the lobby where you are. If you're watching online, you can give us a little bit more information. We'll send one of these to you in the mail. Here's why this is so important, because inside this box, if you don't have a Bible, we have put a Bible. It's not a nice letter bound Bible like this, but it's a starter Bible. You're going to want to start reading that. There's other information in there about the church, how to get connected, baptism, and there's also a gift in here from us to you to say congratulations. One more time, church, can we give God glory? Amen. Will you pray with me and then we'll dismiss to the local teams. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for Christmas that it is an invitation into your family. We're all on the naughty list. <laughs> but thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. You never stop loving us. Through your son, we can become part of your family. We give you thanks for this good news. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, before you go really quick, remember next week we're going to be on demand only. So if you show up at your location, no one's going to be there. <laughs> But make sure you tune into eclife.org. I got a great message for you there. God bless you guys. We'll see you next week. Bring a friend.